Alright, welcome back. I hope you're having a good day. This is a ficus microcarpa. Uh, it was sold to me as a green island, but every time I call it a green island, everybody always corrects me and says that it doesn't have the right kind of leaf for that. Sometimes, I mean, it's really just semantics. I know it's a ficus, I know it's a microcarpa. Uh, this is a, this was an original clump. Uh, I'll show you a couple pictures. Uh, most of the pictures you'll see are probably gonna, or a couple pictures you're gonna see here, either from this way or from the other way there. It was a rather large clump that I had just all in this pot here. And then I have no pictures from when it started to rot out, but it started it started just getting, it actually just got a, a rotten clump in the middle of it. Uh, I was able to res rescue what used to be on this end. And then this end, I actually, when I pulled out the rotted piece, I just repotted this right back into the pot that I had it in. And obviously, you know, it has regained its health. Uh, give you a look from the other side. And then also this side here. And then this will be a good time to just kind of address what this is doing here. The tree that this came from, I'm gonna wind up calling it, uh, I think the cannon, because it kind of reminds me of a cannon the way it sits. But this was a, uh, this was a branch that had broken and I let it lay there in the hopes that it would kind of get some aerial roots and you know, just kind of get swampy down there on the bottom. And it actually did do that but it's separated from the main tree. And so I just repotted it in this little thing here and put it in this pot. I would just continue to let it grow, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a root pruning, mainly just so I could get it out of here and do some work on the tree I'm trying to work on today. I use these, allow them to get escape roots, the uh, couple times that I've let, allowed them get escape roots right on the ground, you know, like I actually have good soil in this. This is actually, this soil in this is back when I still use the mix that has turfus in it. This is the better mix. But I have noticed a few times when I set them right on the ground, they get scale and I think what is nematodes on there. And so I figure, you know, I have this in an oversized pot anyway. Sometimes I take some things and I put them in here just to keep them from blowing over. So I'm gonna dig a little hole and put them in there but I figured I'd have that in there and allow that just to get its escape roots. All right, so I got that out of the way. So I'd have to go back and look at the videos to make sure, but I am fairly certain that last June when I worked this, I cut just the apex back really hard. And then I came back in December. I know I worked it on those two days, two times. I'm just not sure exactly what I did each time. But then when I came back in December, I cut back the apex really hard again, and then just kind of thinned out down here Either I did that or just the opposite. I mean, this will be in the playlist. You can feel free to check out those videos if you want, see the progress. I enjoy going back and looking through the progress sometimes. Problem is I want to do that afterwards, not right now. But from about here down right now, I'm kind of considering, I mean, obviously not to be the apex. And, you know, you, you'll be able to see once I kind of get that where I'm trying to get some of these branches out here to get a little bit wider, just simply because a tree should be wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it back pretty, really hard on top. I am gonna, you know, some of these long leggy ones down here, I am gonna go ahead and trim off. I've been trying to leave a lot of them alone a little bit. Some of them actually you'll find even after I do this little initial trim right here, that once I get in here and get ready to thin it out a little more, but some of these longer shoots to kind of poke out there and get long like that, I always drop off the bottom of a branch that I want it, I'd rather keep. I'd rather have that one growing than that one, but that's just the nature of the way these uh, figs grow. And then up here, in the actual apex, will turn into being almost entirely just some hedge pruning.
All right, figured I'd go ahead and hit that side with the camera off. And then we got this side here. Show you guys this here real quick. Had a couple fruits on there, a couple little figs. Of all the big ones that I've got of this, I've taken like dozens of cuttings of much of the ones that I have in little small training pots are from these parent trees. This is actually the first time one of the parent trees got figs on it. Most of the parent trees just grow and all the little cuttings that I've been taking have been the ones that, that are getting a little fruit on there. Of course, I don't know, my, my memory's kind of going, so, but that's as far as I can recall. and then we'll it's basically the last side here all right and that's the fourth side done there I hate to use the word but kind of hedge pruned and now at this point what I'm going to do is this getting the apex defoliated just so I can kind of see what's going on down lower is very tedious and time consuming here I'm starting to not like doing too much of the uh Time lapse videos, just can't really pick good music. I wish I could pick some Metallica or something like that. So what I'll do is just kind of take some breaks here and there. Again, this is the first side I started on. And just kind of as I work my way around, even right here, you can see this branch is coming straight down. In the apex, I want to make sure, I want to make very sure I get all the growing tips. And I'll give you a few updates here and there as we go. All right, that's where we're at for now. See if I can give you guys a better look at the apex. All right, just about done with this side of the apex here. There's a little, I don't really know if you guys can see that. Yeah, you should be able to see that. I had a little, little bit of growth coming out of there. It was just a little stub. It was almost dead. I hit it with the knob cutters to see if I can't get back to some sap. If I see some sap, I'm still, I'll still leave it. That is dead down to that point. Still dead. And there we go. First bit of sap on there. I don't know if you guys can really see that or not, but I was trying to save the branch because it's got one of these high aerial roots kind of drooping over it. I'm not quite as infatuated with aerial roots as I used to be, but I do like to leave the ones that start really up high and kind of work their way all the way down. I think they look pretty cool.
All right, that is pretty much it for the Apex. Have a look at what the whole thing looks like right now. All right, and then a close up of what's going on here. Well, I tell you what, the FICA sap in this tree, man. The uh, Usually in the summertime, I'll jog or cut my grass or something and then shower up and work on a video if I'm going to. And today I jogged, I didn't even shower because I knew when I did this one I'd get dirty as can be. My fingers are like glue right now. And that's a good time to actually even just mention that uh, the ficus, ficus does have sap that's related to latex. If you have any kind of latex allergy, you should not do this bare handed like I am. I've been doing it for quite a while and I've never had a reaction yet. So I'm assuming that I'm not allergic to latex. So. All right, let's see if I can't. <laughs> that All right, let's see what we got here. All right, that is what the whole thing's looking like now. I kind of did the, uh, I did the apex first, obviously. Kind of did the midsection. So as I go to look to do the bottom of it, if you will, it's really almost nothing on this side. I have to get a little, a little closer over there. All right, and then things look like over here. Some of these little branches coming out are about the only reason I'd like to like to go ahead and I say rush, I'm trying to take my time and not repot it when it doesn't really need it yet. 
There are, this, this pot's way too heavy for me to pick up, but there are a few roots coming out of the bottom. Definitely not root bound yet. And it's definitely been in here long enough to go ahead and repot it if I felt that it needed to. And I guess it has been, well, I guess right around four years. And I kind of didn't finish that thought there, but some of these branches are kind of growing into, on top of, and everything else, the edge of the pot here. As a matter of fact, I'll show you when I put that, uh, that smaller piece back in the other side. When I first started out, I, when I first kind of was doing the hedge pruning at first, if you will, I actually found a piece that had an aerial root that was stuck pretty good in the, in the substrate and I wound up uh, defoliating it. I'm going to stick it in the edge of that thing, see if it survives. I mean, you know, can't hurt to try. If it doesn't, no big deal. Like right now, as I'm looking at it, and see, you know, a thicker branch and kind of coming down, and then it flattens out right when it hits this. It looks goofy to me now when it has foliage on there. Probably won't even be able to notice it. And then whenever I do get it in a different pot of some sort, you'll never be able to see it. So probably not all that much for me to be concerned about. Since this is the first time I've really cleaned out the bottom like this, I think the last couple times I have been leaving quite a bit. A lot of rotten leaves down here. See some aerial roots kind of sort of starting in the top part of it there. The way this side's currently looking, it's a little black, almost as if maybe, maybe when I took out that rotten piece, maybe this was the side that was up against the piece that was rotted out. I'm, I'm not concerned about rot now, but it is a little wet looking in there. Not really all that sure why. Or just a little dank. Definitely going to wait until at least summer 2024 20, before I repot it. I, I'm definitely not going to do it this year. Not sure exactly what kind of pot I even want it in. I know I want it in a rectangle of some sort, but... Super long piece here seems really awkward. Too bad I can't get some movement in it. I'd, I'd really like to, I mean, I, I, I would like to get some wire on it, but then at the same time, I'd also, just because I don't have it in any kind of a better pot right now and everything, I'd like to let it just really grow unrestricted as well. And of course, if you're letting it grow unrestricted, you can't really be able to get in there and see if the wire is biting in or not. I'm sure that's coming from underneath. That one is too. Let's see, I can't direct that aerial root to be a little bit at least closer to the trunk. I mean, the way the way it was right there. I'm 100% sure this will be one of the trees when I edit this video I'll be seeing all kinds of little branches where I'm like why didn't I, have, I see that while I was working on it. It's 
It's interesting how sometimes when it's right in front of your face like this, you don't see exactly what you can see once you get to objectively looking at it on the camera. All right, so finally I'm done. This would presumably be either the front or the back. And then one of the sides there. And the other one. And then again, either the front or the side there. Pardon me, the front or the back. And then this little guy here, I cleaned up a little bit. I, that's in the, uh, I put that in the video for the tree that this came off of. But this right here, this little small one right there, just a little branch that when I had cut it off, it pulled up some aerial roots out of, the, out of here. And so I decided I'd just go ahead and try to and defoliated it and kind of stuck the other root in there. If it makes it, it makes it. If not, not. This time I will. I'm gonna put this just in the corner over here, but this way just to keep it out of the way and maybe keep some more light on that side. 